Hello and welcome, my name is Lexi and today we are going to talk about my recent trip. So this was my vacation, we'll go over that a little bit, but I wanted to really kind of focus on what I brought with me, uh, things that I found great for traveling to a beachy vacation. We went to Playa del Carmen, by the way, in Mexico, and we're talking about sunscreen, makeup, and so forth. This is the look that I created. I do have a video clip showing you of me creating that, you know, one of the nights that we went to a really nice dinner, and I will show you that, but I thought the lighting wasn't great, so I wanted to go ahead and duplicate that look here so you can see both clips so you can see what it looks like in a little bit better lighting but let's go ahead and get started with what i brought with me and let's start off with what i consider some essentials so sun care so last year i purchased this bag from eric javits that is a brand that they're known for their sun hats they've got you know it's like fantastic sun protection. So I purchased this matching hat, which by the way, does fold up. You can put it in your suitcase and then you just wanna unfold it, let it sit for a little bit and it will kind of just puff back up the way that it is. So this is the sun hat and right now it's still a little bent, but I picked these up last summer. Uh, they have a big clearance sale every year. So I picked these up along with a couple other items and they are really essential for me for sun care, especially with the fair skin. I love to wear sun hats. So I use this, you know, even just taking the dog out in general. So I think it's a really great product to have. If you don't have a great big sun hat, definitely recommend that. I forgot to bring up my sunglasses, but um, you know, I do also wear sunglasses with you know, all the blockage that you can get. So um, I'll put a link to those here as well. So those are, I'm trying to remember the name of the brand, but you know, I think they're really great. So I'll link those, put up a picture here, but I wanted to kind of go over the sunscreen that I bought because I mean, as you might've guessed, I don't skimp on the sunscreen. I did get a little burnt on the last day there. You can see a little bit of the remains there, but honestly, I've been using the Calisims uh, skincare to really relieve that redness and that burn it wasn't that bad um, but the calcium serum the pink serum I've been putting that on a couple times a day I've only been back for a day so it's been a day and a night I've been putting that on and I'm using a little bit more than I would on a regular basis and then the multi-action cream on top of that and it was my shoulders and my face and we'll get into why <laughs> I got that in a little bit, but it wasn't because of these sunscreens. I actually wasn't wearing any at the time. So I like to purchase like European or Australian sunscreens. I feel like they have better filters than what we have here in the US. So these I did purchase and um, bought these from Europe. So I will link the store that I purchased these at down below in the description box. But this one here is Garnier. It's a sensitive advanced 50 plus uh, blockage. And this is also great for children. So I picked this one up and we're about halfway through the bottle. This was a new bottle just for the trip. I also picked up the dual pack of this from Costco, it was on sale. I always like, uh, particularly on my back, I don't always trust people putting sunscreen on my back. So after that's on, I go in with this. So this one bottle is empty, I have another full bottle. Another one that I found really, really great is this. So this is my first time trying this, Piz Buen. Uh, but it's an allergy sun sensitive skin spray. It's 50 plus SPF and you know, it has Calmanel, which is supposed to strengthen skin's sun resilience. And I don't know how well all of that works, but I have to say that I did not burn when using this. This is great. So it looks like it's a spray bottle, but it's one of those ones that sprays out like this. So you're not gonna like just spray it on your body. It's not like, um, like an aerosol type spray. So I sprayed into my hand and then go ahead and uh, put that on. So another one that I have like that, and this I bought specifically for the kids, but we all used it as well, is this one from Bioderma. So again, 50 plus, this is for children and with delicate skin, very water resistant. This worked really well. It's unscented, no fragrance, which I really like. 
And then it might carry on because of the liquids rule. I wanted to pack something small just in case something got lost. <laughs> so I brought the Toady Solaria Mineral SPF 50 plus. And this is my typical, uh, you know, facial sunscreen that I've been using. So I did use this on my, my face a few times, but for the most part, I relied on these other sunscreens. And I have to say, I really did enjoy these. So my children's favorite was this one. They don't really like the ones that you have to spray out, even though it's not an aerosol spray, they still prefer the texture of this. It's a little bit thicker. And then for me, my personal favorite was this one. So. Yeah, overall, uh, I think those were a great batch of sunscreens. Happy that I picked those up. And uh, those are ones that I will repurchase in the future, particularly this one. Now, as for makeup, when I go on a beachy vacation, I typically don't really wear makeup much. I, you know, I just layer on the sunscreen. I don't put anything on top of that. Even, you know, like dinners and stuff, it's hot. So I don't like to wear anything on my skin. So I didn't bring a ton. I like to pack very light for the makeup. I try to pack things that are easy to use, something not too bright, you know, kind of light and natural. So we did have a nice dinner planned and I'll talk about that when I go over the itinerary, the details of our trip, which I'll do at the end of this video. But it's really awesome. It was in a cave. And um, so I did bring some makeup. So this is a makeup bag I use. It's incredibly old, probably somewhere between 10 and 15 years. Back when, remember when Sephora used to give like nice makeup bags as a gift with purchase? This was one of them. So my um, thing, little handle broke. So we have just a little piece of gimp here. And yeah, so it's just a makeup bag. And inside, I brought the Ray Morris travel set, which I love this because I love having the case. I love having this frame. If I were going on a longer trip, this is definitely one I'd bring because this makes it so easy to wash. You know, it's magnetic all around, hang them upside down to dry. So I used a few of these brushes. The set, the Raymore set now includes, I believe two additional brushes that was not part of the set when I purchased these. They added those just a few months ago. I wanna say maybe four or five months ago. So I'll have to pick those up sometime if you can buy those separately. But I love this because, you know, you can just package it back up in here. You This is reversible from the black or the gray. And then you just fold in the sides and it clips shut. So that fits very nicely in my bag. I also brought a microfiber cloth along with the Ray Morris Kabuki. This is number 20, 28. A little hard to see the number sometimes. So I used this one as well. And I also brought this Guerlain L'Essentiel brush, which, you know, I wasn't sure whether I was gonna use this or the Kabuki, but I ended up using the Kabuki, so I didn't use that this time. But this is a great brush to travel with, whether you have liquid or powder foundation, it's very easy to use. I don't think they're really making this anymore. It's really hard to find, but I think it's a great brush. I wish they'd bring that one back. So as for the makeup products, I picked up the Suku, well, it, this is old now. <laughs> what is it, like one to two years? But this is shade 210 in the Suku powder foundation. I never got the case for this. It was always sold out when I purchased this and then I just kind of forgot. But I always travel with this, I love this. This powder foundation, you know, it's great on its own and it sinks into your skin so it doesn't look powdery. Or you can use this wet and make it like a cream foundation. So I think it's a very versatile product. The shade itself is a little bit darker than what I wear typically all year, but with the amount of sun I was getting, it worked totally fine. So that's what I brought for my base product. And you know, I actually just use that for foundation, concealer, or whatever. For blush, I brought the Hourglass uh, the, what is it? The diffused rose edit palette. So really like this one. I did scratch mine. So that scratch is not normal there. I scratched it on, on a screw in my drawer. So, but I, I brought this, I used the blush and the highlighter here. And then for eyeshadow, when I was packing, I really wasn't sure, you know, how much I'd wear makeup, what I wanted to wear. So this is one of my standard go-to travel items. It's the Viseart Lila's palette or Lila's and I'm swatching this upside down, but let's go ahead and just take a look at this. But I love going with kind of these like movie neutral shades. 
here. So this is the Lila's palette. I love it. So I end up not wearing this, but I bring it with me basically every time I travel somewhere because it's so handy. It's small and it's got a great set of shades here. What I ended up using on my eyes was the Surat Smoky Eye Baton in Sandra. And I recently had this on my channel and I didn't realize that this opens up further. So we have kind of this crayon side here and you can see it's a soft taupe, but then this also unscrews here and you get the smoky part here and you get kind of this shimmery, creamy shadow that is in an even lighter taupe. And look at that, it's like got this gorgeous soft shimmer there. So, you know, I just, I think, it's just a great product. So I brought this. This is fantastic for traveling with. You don't need to bring anything else really aside from one of these. But I also paired that with the Shantikai eyeliner in Olive Brocade. It's one of my all time favorites. You can see we've got this beautiful golden shimmer on this olive green base. A few other staples, the Victoria Beckham brow blade or baby blade in taupe and the it's actually this one, the Surat Noir Lash Tint. This is actually really great to have at the beach because if you are wearing makeup and you're going in the pool or something, this is waterproof, but it's it needs an oil-based cleanser to remove. So it's waterproof, but it's not your traditional waterproof mascara. It has more of that like vinyl latex texture to it. It's not coming off until you remove it with oil. So this is just such a, a great product to have at a beach. And then for lip products, I had to bring a few choices. So what I ended up wearing is the Sisley Fido Lip Twist in number one, nude. Just put that right there and you can see it's just a very soft nude pink with a little bit of shimmer. I also wore this during the days. This is the Dior Lip Maximizer in 27. This is before they redid them when they came out with some of those special, I think they were spring shades. This one has a touch of lavender. But you can see it's basically uh, translucent with a little bit of holographic lavender to it. I also brought one of the older Clay de Peau glosses in number three, Charmed, <laughs> or Charm. And I still absolutely love this wand. I think it is the best wand ever. And it is like my favorite shade. I love these kind of nude pinks. This is just such a classic, iconic shade to me. So for lip pencils, I brought the Sephora lip liner in the nudist which again just a really nice nude shade there is a touch of mauve in this so you know it's just a really great neutral leaning cool so you can see I went with kind of a very light subtle palette overall and that's what I really like for some of these you know warm weather types of vacations so let me know what you like to pack, what you pack with you when you go on trips and so forth. So let's go ahead. I'm going to talk a little bit about my trip because I have had uh, quite a few inquiries and questions about it. So let's go ahead and discuss that a little bit. And I'm going to be showing you some clips of our trip while I talk about it. And I'm going to switch over to doing a voiceover for this. So if the volume audio sounds a little bit different, that's the reason for that. It just makes it a little bit easier to try to stay on target with the photos that I'm showing at the same time. So I hope this is helpful. Overall, I think we had a fantastic trip. One of the best parts though, I have to say, was coming home and seeing Sadie's reaction. So my parents stayed with her and, you know, it was just such a great, such a great welcome. She was so excited to see us. And, you know, being a new puppy still, it's always a little nerve wracking. Is she gonna really like us or is she gonna prefer them and so forth? So we were all overjoyed to see how happy she was to see us. And of course we were just as excited to see her. So let me go ahead and let's go through what we did. We were there for, you know, about a week and I'll share, we had a couple like down days on there, but I'll share the days of activities and some of the things that if you're planning a trip to this area, these are things that you might want to include. So we went to a nice restaurant. It's called Alux. It's in a cave. Really cool. I'll show you some clips of that in a little bit. 
and uh, you know I wanted to put on a little bit of makeup so the upper right hand corner is showing you the live clip while I was on my trip in Mexico I'm sitting in front of the balcony door so I've got natural light there but unfortunately there was nowhere to sit outside so I could show the ocean view from that but the big frame on the screen is going to be today's look which is a duplicate i did do a few things out of order but all the products and brushes are exactly the same just so you can get a better idea of you know what everything looked like it was hard to get a good view in mexico so i started off with the suku powder foundation in shade 210 it's a little bit deep for every day but it works great on a beach vacation and as i mentioned you can use that wet or dry so it's really such a versatile product and I used the Ray Morris Kabuki number 28 with that which I brought along and added to my travel set but that is not part of the travel set and then I the rest of the brushes I used were all from the Ray Morris travel set I used the hourglass diffused rose edit palette for blush and highlight and on the eyes I used the Surat smoky eye baton in Sandra and I used my fingers and the Surat applicator for that primarily and then I just blended it all together with the Ray Morris number 11 brush and I really like how we've got this dual product here it performs well it's gorgeous it's a great everyday taupe shade leans a little cool which you know I really like but it's more neutral versus you know a cool taupe I finished it off with the Chantecaille Olive Brocade eyeliner this is one of my all-time favorite eyeliners the one that I'm using ha is the original silk infused formula, but they now have removed silk from it. And I believe I'd have to double check, but I believe it is vegan now. And I use the Ray Morris number 12 brush to kind of blend that out a little bit. And, you know, again, just a gorgeous green with a little bit of gold shimmer in there. And for the eyelash curler, I'm using the original Ruffer curler, but if you're looking for similar shape, the new 20R version is essentially the same. It's just a little bit sturdier. We've got it, you know, the, the actual pieces are kind of doubled up. And then I, I think the Surat Noir lash tint is incredible for beachy vacations. It really holds up well in the heat and humidity. You don't get smudging or flaking or anything like that. If you want to wear it in the water, you can. You need an oil-based remover to take it off. So it really stays put. And of course, I had to use the Victoria Beckham Baby Blade. This is like a go-to product for me. I love the way this performs, the way it looks on my brows. And you can see here, you know the difference between the side that I had done versus not done so just a really great product now today I added one additional thing I added a little bit of the highlight from the hourglass palette to the brow bone I think that was a nice addition it just brightened things up a little bit so I didn't do that on the trip but I did really like that for lips I used you know one of my favorite lip products the Sisley Fido Lip Twist in shade number one nude this one in shade number 24 rosy nude those are my two favorite shades in this product and i use these a lot particularly during the summer so i think this was a really nice great minimal look very you know easy for every day but great for any occasion so we stayed at the grand hyatt in playa del carmen and this is kind of the entrance when you drive up this is what you see this kind of cascading waterfall over all of these steps and then this is the lobby of the hotel and you can see as you walk straight back through the lobby you can see the ocean and it's all open it's really nice there's actually this incredible maze of pools down there where you basically have all of these like um, individual pools that are connected through like infinity edges so they flow down and you know the hotel is empty enough that pretty much at all times there was you know an empty pool for us to use which was great because you know my daughters you know, they prefer that um, my youngest is not the most confident swimmer yet so getting splashed and stuff by other kids still bothers her this is that was first the view from our room and then we went out to eat right away uh, you know it was evening when we got there so this is the view from the restaurant and we went to one of the hotel restaurants called 
La Cucina, which is actually where we ended up taking most of our meals. We tried a bunch of places, but that one ended up being our favorite. And as dinner progressed, you can see it got a lot darker, but it's got this beautiful, you know, water like pathway here that borders the seats and then it's right on the ocean. So it's a really gorgeous view and you can eat outside. They also have an inside. We ate outside the whole time. Now, our first full day, we ended up going on a private boat. So we went on this trip with some friends of ours. So we ended up all together. We went on this private catamaran trip and we did snorkeling. We got to see sea turtles up close and everything. It was awesome. We also did paddle boarding and so forth. So definitely well worth it. Now, when I did the makeup, this is the restaurant we went to. It's called Alux, and it's inside a cave. So basically, they found this, you know, cave and turned it into a restaurant. There's like a cenote and so forth in here as well. But this is the path to our table. So you can kind of see, you know, as we're walking to our table here, and it's really intricate. And there are a whole bunch of different like little rooms off this cave, and you can book different places to eat they have private rooms that you know have more you know like more scenic things that you might want to see and so forth but uh yeah you know this is definitely a really interesting restaurant and you know it kind of looks fake at first with the way all of the bright lights are and so forth but it's not it's all real real cave and when we got there it wasn't very busy yet it you know kind of picked up a little bit but overall it was a very private experience and you know it was really nice now the food the food was pretty good but <laughs> i was a little surprised you know this was our bread course and as you can see we've actually got crickets so <laughs> there were crickets on some of the meals um so i didn't eat any of them this was my main course it was the sea bass and then we were able to get tour of the cave you know just kind of wander around a bit and there are bats so my oldest daughter her favorite stuffed animal has always been a bat since she was a little baby so i was in search of these bats so we're wandering around and they kept flying over my head but i just i kept missing them like i couldn't see them and they were getting like really close to my hair it's getting a little worried about like guano falling in there but you know it was really awesome so i finally got them on there but that's why i'm taking so much video here of like the ceiling and the upper parts i'm looking for their nesting sites and then we finally found them and you know it was you know it, it was a little bit more nerve-wracking than i thought it would be i was just so afraid of getting bat poop on me but you, this cave is actually pretty large so you can keep wandering through it and you know it actually circles around back to the front so it's kind of big circle and then you can exit this way so i thought it was a really cool experience it was definitely something really fun and uh yeah i won't forget it so that was sort of a day off and then the next day we had another jam-packed day we went to chichen itza and you know we saw the mayan ruins and it was really awesome so this here is one of the temples and you can see, you know, they have recently unearthed this and one side has a lot of restoration. You can see this side here does not. So you can kind of see what kind of state it was in when it was unearthed because all of this was covered by vegetation. This here is like the wall of skulls. You can see all of these skulls here engraved into the wall. And we've got some other temples and ruin sites here. But this was one of the huge Mayan cities in the area at the time. And, you know, it's just incredible to see all of this and how everything was, you know, built and constructed by hand, how things were really well thought out and so forth. You know, it, this here, after that, we went on a trip to a cenote. So, this one here you can see is an open air cenote it's actually pretty deep it's like 90 to 100 feet to the water and then 90 to 100 feet down into the water so uh you know you can jump into it from there it is fresh water you can see fish swimming in there really beautiful to see all of these vines and the waterfalls hanging down i actually didn't go in it i was a little nervous about you know infections you can get from fresh water but kind of regret that i feel like maybe i should have gone in 
And then the next day, this was actually our last full day here, we went swimming with the dolphins and they're actually pushing me up from my feet here. We were able to hold on to their fins where they pulled us through the pool. You can do this on the pool or on the beach. We chose the pool because of my youngest daughter and so forth. But we had two beautiful dolphins, Diego and Nala. They were fantastic, so cooperative. I hope this was helpful. Again, I'd love to know what you like to pack with you on vacation, what types of vacations you enjoy. And I hope this was helpful. So especially if you're planning a trip to this area, I hope some of these suggestions and things, you know, were, were helpful to kind of figure out some things that you may or may not want to do. I have to say the highlight of our trip was definitely the swimming with dolphins. So it was a fantastic, fantastic time. So, you know, all four of us did that and it was really it was a wonderful experience. I definitely would love to do it again, possibly when the girls are a little bit older uh, and, you know, definitely worth it. So it's kind of an investment with the photo packages that they kind of, I mean, they don't make you buy it, but you're not going to get photos otherwise. So um, yeah, it's just totally worth it. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you very soon.